Welcome back, Steppling here. People are finding some weird issues with my instant wire, so I did a little bit of investigation. Here's the type of issues people were seeing. If you flicked some of the switches here, uh, instant wire would work perfectly. If, if, you flicked, if you flicked others, sometimes it wouldn't work. So this green one, for instance, doesn't work. So let me show you first a normal one. You can see the, the signal gets the same amount uh, along each line. The left one is the input line, the, the right one is the output line. So it's, that's instant on, on, the, uh, on the onward edge, and then on the offward edge, it's also instant. Um, but when I hit the green one, you can see the input signal is one tick ahead of the output signal, there was a delay. Um, on the downward edge, it's still, it's, it's still instant. Um, so, you know, some people speculated that maybe, since this one's closer to the output, um, it was updating this wire before, uh, before, before this uh, block had a chance to extend, and those people are sort of right. Um, it turns out that sometimes you could have like a switch that's over here that would have the same effect, though, where it, it wouldn't work on some on a switch like this, but then it would work on a switch over here. So there was some really weird stuff going on, and I didn't understand it, so I did some investigation. And I actually digged into the code a little bit, too. So um, to illustrate what's going on, let me, sh let me show you some other stuff. So first I'll show you this. Um, so when I flick this switch, nothing happens. When I flick it back, we heard a sound from the door opening and closing. That's because this torch depowered the red redstone line here, um, and that that opened the door, and then the on the other side of the line, the uh, this pa this this redstone got powered, and then closed the door. So one more time, the the door opened and closed really fast, faster than we could even see. In fact, it's within a single update cycle that the door opened and closed. So that's what happens when I flick this switch. What about this one? So it's different behavior. This one, the door opens and closes on both the up and down. Okay, this one. Okay, this one's just the down, not the up. This one's just the up, not the down. And it's very consistent. It works the same every time you do it. Um, and so it's sort of basically w when the signal gets to this side, with some of these switches, the signal is going left first, and with some of the switches, the signal is going right first, and so it causes different behavior um, with the door. So that's interesting. Um, but what, it gets even more interesting. I'm going to flick this switch on and off, and now when I come back here, This activates on the downward, but not the upward. Same for this one. Same for this one. And this one doesn't even activate the door at all. No sounds. Very consistent still. Um, if I go, if I were to go back over here to check out my instant wire, um, this switch is still instant. Still instant on both. Uh, this switch is still still has a delay on the upward edge and no delay on the outward edge. So that behaves the same. Um, but then I'm going to do another experiment and I'm going to add some redstone in here and I'm going to flick this switch on and off again and now the whole thing is getting powered and depowered and I'm going to run this one again. Okay. Now it's getting it's hitting the door on both a downward and upward tick. Same here. Same here. Oh, sorry. This is different. This is just the downward. And this one's on just the upward. Different behavior again. Still consistent. Still going to happen exactly the same every time I touch it. Um, and then if I go over here to my repeater, this one still instant. Let me show you from a higher angle. Still instant on both edges. This one is now also instant on both edges. Okay, so this is probably really confusing. 
Um, I have an explanation though. And the explanation may only make sense if you're a programmer, have some experience programming. Um, because I actually looked into the source code for this one. I just could not figure out what was going on. Um, and the explanation is that when Minecraft is updating redstone blocks, if it updates a bunch in the same update cycle, it adds all the blocks that it needs to update to a, uh, a hash set. A hash set is a type of structure used in programming for keeping track of a set of, uh, of objects. In this case, it's, um, it's keeping track of a set of block locations that it needs to update. And a hash set's really useful for accessing a, a list of things really fast. If you're guaranteed to only have um, uh, like one of any given thing in the list, so we're not going to have this x, y, and z coordinate multiple times in the list. It's only going to appear once. That's what we use a hash set for in the programming world. Um, and basically, it adds these things to the hash set, and then it goes through the hash set and and just updates the the, the blocks one at a time. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't do all of them at once, like it wouldn't do all of them in this wire at the same time. Um, it, it basically, like if I flick this switch, first it's going to add uh, this block, this block, and this block to the hash set. Then it's going to update all of them, and that's going to cause this block to get added to the hash set. That's going to get updated, um, etc. along this wire, and then it'll go back and do, do this wire. But the point is that the behavior for any given um, for an even wire is going to depend on what order its neighbors come in in the hash set, and that's going to be pretty much random. Um, moreover, if you have any update cycle which updates a large number of redstone blocks, the hash set isn't going to be enough isn't, isn't going to be big enough to contain all of those uh, all of those blocks. So the hash set's going to perform an operation uh, called a resize, which is going to increase the size of the hash set in order to be able to contain enough space for all the redstone blocks that you need to update. And when it does that, it completely changes the order in which blocks go into the hash set. So even though it may have updated um, rightwards and then leftwards before, once the hash set resizes, it could change that order completely. And so when I did the first, uh, the first thing with, with none of these here and I, and I flicked this on and off, First, the hash set started out at a size of 16, which is the default size for a hash set in Java. But there's, there's a lot more than 16 things in here, and so it caused a lot more updates than that. And so it had to resize the hash set. And when it did that, that changed the order in which these updates got evaluated. Um, and then when I added, added these lines in here, it caused the entire thing to get, uh, to get powered. That resized the hash set once more to a much larger size, and uh, and so that once again changed the way that these blocks get updated, and also the blocks way over here uh, in my instant repeater. So the moral of the story here is that you have to be really careful when you're trying to do things that depend on the order of updates, like for instance my dual edge instant wire. Um, if you're, if you're planning on using this to build something big and you want reliable behavior, uh, what I would plan on doing is having a big thing like this that will force your hash set size to increase um, every time that you start up mi Minecraft. If I, if I restart Minecraft, it resets this whole thing. And actually, when I started recording this video, I had just started up Minecraft. So, so um, if you're gonna if you're gonna use instant wire for anything anything big like a computer or something, you're gonna want reliable behavior, and in order to do that, you're gonna want something like this. And in fact, you might even want it bigger so that you'll make sure that the uh, the block update hash set is not going to have to increase while you're running the computer because that will actually change the nature of the instant wire that you use in the computer. So. Um, I'm sorry this has been a little overly technical. Uh, I've tried to explain it as best I can, but um, if, if you're more interested, 
you're probably uh, reading up on um, hash set, Java hash set might be useful for you. Um, if, you know, if this doesn't apply to you, then just feel free to dis disregard it. But I thought it was really interesting, and it sort of uh, explains a lot of weird behavior that uh, a lot of people have been seeing with, uh, with, with instant wire and, and with uh, block up detectors and stuff. Um, so, yeah, um, hopefully this has been helpful to some people at least. Uh, thanks for watching.